because I didn't even do a presentation per se. I was too busy doing everything else. Um, so basically just presenting on the idea of what the Zeitgeist is or the Zeitgeist movement and what our train of thought is. Um, and it's basically just just do everything intelligently. That's the that's the bottom line. Like don't do things badly. Um, I know most people here are fairly qualified when it comes to answering questions about what any cool new thing is. So I was wondering if maybe we could just do sort of a Q&A quickly. If anyone here doesn't know what Zeitgeist Calgary does or what the Zeitgeist movement is all about. You? I do not. <laughs> you do not know anything about anything? No, not really. Cool. Well, there's a couple of documentaries I'd urge you to watch. Um, a couple of them called Zeitgeist, all of them actually. Um, but in general, the current system is based on infinite growth. Uh, it's based on uh, accepting things as they are instead of um, making up new ideas based on relevant new information. And we are proponents of doing things sustainably, doing things based on the available information and available resources, and uh, coming together in a rational way to make everything work for everyone, as opposed to just making things work poorly for the bottom uh, 99% and really, really well for the top 1%. Yes? Aaron? Um, I've got a question with regards to, uh, you suggested that uh, people want uh, for this uh, lovely woman here to uh, watch a couple uh, movies. I was just curious if you thought that um, encouraging people to participate in Zeitgeist for a few months before they actually watch the movies would actually give a different perspective that may give ideas that are revolutionary that you may not have thought before. So Aaron's suggesting that people would just sort of randomly volunteer to help social movements like Zeitgeist to do cool projects before actually watching any of our communist propaganda. So <laughs> that is a good idea. And I encourage you to either enjoy our communist propaganda as you see fit, or to take part in any and all social movement activity in your local scene. Any other questions? Uh, Britt wants to know how our last event was. It was a, a can't buy me love party. It was sort of a anti Valentine's pro love thing, and uh, we were over fire capacity for a couple of hours during the night, which is good. Uh, we made too much money, so we gave some of it to the other social movements in Calgary, and we saved a little bit of it to make uh, another party happen. Um, the next one will be uh, a fundraiser, sort of, for Fozzy Fest, which is a, 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 a cool live music thing out in the forest. Uh, we're going to join forces with them so we can get bigger speakers and a, and a bigger uh, venue and just generally do things more pro, and it'll be even cooler and more awesome. So. But um, keep in mind, anyone here who were at the last event and who donated a, a lot, uh, don't, don't consider paying for anything at the next event, because the, the next event will also be pay what you want, but because we got so much money last time, uh, anyone who donated last time, I encourage you to either donate very little or, or don't donate at all, because uh, we'll still make uh, more than enough that we need to, so. What about hugs? Uh, hugs are always free, and there are always enough for everyone. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Ader? Uh, that proves that love multiplies even money. Yeah, uh, when you do a pay what you want event, you make more profit than you need, which is funny. Uh, when you don't even decide on a profit margin, and you just arbitrarily ask people to remunerate you in a way that they see fit, you still make off like a bandit. Uh, and that's not what you want, obviously, but, well, it is in certain un unfortunate aspects, but, um, <laughs> It, it's really cool that we're, we're trying to do these things uh, semi-sustainably and intelligently. Sorry, uh, what's up? Uh, for the people that don't know about that, guys, could you like explain the idea of having like a, a scientist tell us how to bridge, build a bridge versus a politician? Or... Gladly. Uh, that would be paraphrasing a Jacques Fresco point from about 2003. He does make a very valid point. Um, something that I guess movement is very much a proponent of is asking the right questions and asking them to the right people or even to the right questions, uh, the right data. That you could ask uh, the right question to a computer and get a better response than almost any, any human, but that's maybe another uh, uh, discussion. Um, let's say that you have an icy bridge. Let's say we have one in Calgary called the Cafro Bridge. Do you think that the city of Calgary putting up a sign saying icy road um, has solved anything or saved any lives? No, because most Calgarians buy the wrong tires 
and everyone uh, in city council don't understand anything about the mu value it's, uh, between uh, types of tarmac and types of tires, especially when run underneath a river that has toxic water spilled into it, which is hot enough to make steam happen on both the under and upper side of said bridge. So, an intelligent solution would be to change the tarmac into a type of polygraphite that changes shape at different temperatures, thus having a higher coefficient of friction, higher mu value, if you will, if you're a physicist, and, or, you know, making people buy the right tires, saying, by mandate, everyone in Calgary between these months and these months, buy this type of compound tire so that you don't die. Or you can put up a sign. <laughs> So that's, that's, the, that's the difference between sort of the zeitgeist way of doing it, if you will, and the, the, the current sort of way of doing things. Does that make sense? Yeah. Chelsea? Yeah. How come, um, why is it that some people think that zeitgeisters are anti-Semitic? Um, I don't know. I think the first movie touched on too many religious subjects, and uh, one of the ladies that was uh, referenced in the first movie, uh, what's her name? Does anyone remember? She wrote the book about Horus and all those people. No? Uh, I think it's Akaya S or something. And, and apparently, just because of the way she wrote, a couple of Jewish uh, authors were offended and wrote some blog things that then spurred something in the Jewish community. Uh, I can assure you that nothing about doing things intelligently is either pro or anti any particular religion. Um, you can believe in whatever kind of fairy tales you want, science is science, and it's measurable, and you can experiment something repeatedly until you understand it, or you can prove it within some sort of reasonable, you know, assumption. Uh, if I drop this microphone, it's going to make a loud bang every time. It doesn't matter if I believe it will or not. Unless That's, it's turned off. Well, it'll make a loud bang when it hits the ground, like, if I'm close to it. Like, it won't make a love pain for you, maybe, but... What about that? <laughs> then it's sort of a different perception of things, but objectively, using machines that have data that is relatively objective, something that can be peer-reviewed, you can arrive at uh, something that's close to the truth, as opposed to just <laughs> falsely believing something someone tells you. That's sort of the deal. You've had your hand up for a really long time. Um, actually, Patrick asked my first question. Oh, okay. No, it's incredibly circular and it's sort of a just, um, if you want to be a big part of it, then you are. Uh, if you want to just be a supporter, then you are. Well, that's another fact that everyone on the planet is a part of the zeitgeist movement in and of itself. The fact that um, the zeitgeist is the spirit of the age, it's the, it's the culture, it's the whole technological aspect of everything we are, in and of itself, the movement is through time, that's all of us doing that sort of constantly. So the zeitgeist movement is mankind moving towards, or humankind moving towards a future of some kind. Um, I've noticed that the current hierarchical and patriarchal way of running society uh, has uh, mirrored itself in every social movement I've been a part of. Uh, I see, uh, you know, tiered structures with people sort of ordering other people to do stuff. But that's because we're used to doing it that way. And everyone is trying very, very hard to uh, do things as circular as possible, you know, get everyone involved, get people's opinions, whose opinions matter. Obviously, you're not going to ask kindergartens how to build skyscrapers, but, um, you know, you get the right people's opinions for the right projects, and you involve everyone as much as they want to be involved. And that's, that's it. That's, that's the hierarchy. Uh, I was going to get probably one or two more questions because I think we're running a uh, long time here, but you haven't asked anything yet. What's up? Yes, sir. No, just probably you, Brent. Sorry. Does Zeitgeist have any um, standards or uh, structure? And if so, is it willing to or able to evolve as we evolve? Um, you're asking if there are any current standards or procedures sort of built into our movement? Rules. Rules? No. Um, no, not really. We do, no, nothing is written in stone at all. Uh, everything is very, very much open to um, criticism, to improvement, to, uh, to, to everything. So, I mean, if, 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 if something's being done within the movement or, or by one of the members in a way that uh, could be done better, then, then that's something that's always up for discussion or, or, you know, you can just take the lead on it and say, hey, you know what, the Zeitgeist movement isn't doing this about this, so I'm going to go do that and make sure it gets done right. And that's 
that's encouraged. Uh, there, there, nothing is really written in stone. And everything's quite um, flexible at, at this point. Any other important questions that need to be answered? I can see a point with the cash that I get, tickets and stuff. I write www.thesitekidsmovement.com. That's phenomenal. So, it's, a good, <laughs> it's a good way to advertise. I found some of those. Phenomenal. I, I encourage everyone to try and get our train of thought out there. I encourage anyone who has any um, partial allegiance to, to, to doing things rationally to encourage your friends to, to sign up just for the newsletter, just so we have um, like some numbers we can track, like we can send out emails when there's you know, uh, anything large going on or anything for that matter. Uh, I'm going to Z-Day in Vancouver, but there might be a Z-Day event here in Calgary still. Um, I, I'm not sure what that would entail, but uh, the one in Vancouver is a couple of different presentations from different speakers from the world, including Federico Pistono from Italy and Peter Joseph from New York. So it should be really fun, and I encourage anyone to come to that as well. Okay, have a good night. Oh, James, I'll speed you in. Uh, yeah, you're thanks. James. Um, okay, so with a structure that's so relaxed and everyone encouraged to be so autonomous in the decisions, um, two questions. One, how do you guys organize large events? How do you come together to organize? And how would a person who is not already in this structure become involved? Um, you're asking how we are organized and how we organize for events. Um, currently, relatively poorly. Um, a lot of it's just through social networking. Uh, you know, people have, as unfortunate as it is, jobs and families and social lives and all these other things that they kind of have to do, you know, before saving the world. And I know. <laughs> Great. But uh, but yeah, I, I mean, getting getting involved uh, primarily by social networks or telephone numbers and text messaging is the the, the best way to sort of stay in the loop as to what's going on, at least in the, the, the local chapter. Uh, getting more involved on a global scale, and by, uh, you're invited to jo join the, the, the forums on the zeitgeistmovement.org or the com and, uh, and, and the TeamSpeak meetings, which are still pretty hectic, because it's like a Skype call with 500 people in it. Um, we've, had to, we've had to install moderators so that we, we, we get people to speak one at a time, sort of like, uh, what's the term, facilitators like we have for Occupy. Uh, and, and, and things are evolving, like, it's a lot less chaotic than it was, say, two years ago. You go to a TeamSpeak meeting, or you go on a forum, or you, you go to a Zeitgeist Calgary meeting, uh, it, it has some structure, it has some organization to it, some stuff that has kind of evolved, but it's still not as rigid as, say, going to a corporate meeting at 3 p.m. in downtown Bankers Hall. It's not going to be, it's not going to be that, They're, the agenda won't, you know, it's it's not square yet. It's uh, but 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 we're getting we're getting there. We're getting things figured out, and it's a uh, it's good. And uh, I encourage anyone to to join up in any way, shape, or form that they can. Uh, approach people who they know have some sort of contact to it, or go to one of the websites or social uh, media sites uh, and get involved that way. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs>